Welcome to the Modular Clubhouse. I'm Jesper, and this is the Reduxer by Voices. So, Reduxer is in essence a, a, a bit crushing, bit sampling, reducing kind of module, um, but it is very playable and it's meant to be incorporated into a very performative, uh, well, setup, you might say. Um, so I do have to thank Voices for uh, making this module available to me. So again, uh, Morty Dekel, thank you guys so much. I do truly appreciate this. And um, if you want to know these guys a bit better, uh, please feel free to review the interview we've done with them a while back. And by we, I mean me, <laughs> but also the rest of the community um, that um, joined me in for the actual Q&A and I think we've had a real blast. So that's on the um, module as well. I'm gonna link to that right here somewhere. I'm gonna do my best at least. So um, that being said, uh, this is gonna be a very, well, you might say sound exploratory video, uh, but I hope you guys are uh, ready for that. So for now, we'll just say sit down, relax, put your feet up, kick your shoes off, whatever you like, because um, here we go. So here we have the Reduxer by Voices um, up close and personal. And it is of course accompanied by its two well, best friends, um, the uh, two LFO and the lead Rover. Um, so don't, don't worry, I'm gonna do a full expose on the lead Rover and you're gonna see a lot of the two LFO in the coming weeks as well. Uh, but first things first, let's just quickly run through what we see here. Um, so we do see immediately that we've got a 300 degree, well, put meter right there to set the, well, the level of redux, you might say. And that is, of course, well, you might call it bit reduction, you might call it um, resolution reduction, however you want to call it. That's what this actually does. And then you've got a spread. So this is, again, this is a stereo module. So you can get two inputs and you'll have two outputs. And what spread actually does is it adds the, the amount of spread that you set here, it's gonna add that to Redux for the second channel. So you can easily just add more Redux to well, your second channel if you want. And that can be, of course, very, very subtle. So you'll have that stereo effect going on, or you can go all out and make sure that you have some very wonky stereo effects. Um, then you've got the uh, amount of mix. So you might call this a, uh, well, a dry and a wet signal, you might say. You've got your gain for your inputs, and that is only for input one. And of course, that makes sure that you can easily level both of them and you've got your volume out as well. And then you've got your amount. This is essentially a attenuator for the CV that you put in there, which will then of course control the amount of redux. So that's essentially what this does. And what I wanna do is I just wanna, at first, just wanna show you what we uh, what we get there. So I'm gonna use the graphic VCO because that, that way you can immediately see what we, uh, what we do, uh, but I also want to make sure that we can actually see it on the, well, oscilloscope too. So I'm using my trusted, well, partner in crime, which is the uh, eight by eight buffered matrix by Tesseract right down there. So this is the sound that we have currently, which is again, a very straightforward sine wave. I'm gonna let that patch this in there as well, so we can actually hear what we work with. There you go. We might want to tune that down a bit, or a bit, bit up. And I might want to zoom in. Something like that. And if we then tune it down just slightly, something like that and we then just make sure that we get the whole signal on there so that's nice so what we then do is we actually patch this signal 
into the Redox. I'm just going to use input 1 for now. I'm going to put everything down to 0, including the gain and the volume and the amount. And I'm then going to patch this back. into input 2, there you go, and we'll then have ENF that we can work with. So this is a signal that we now get into it, so that's the, the visible one, and as you can see it's currently at zero, and that of course makes a lot of sense. And what we'll then also do is make sure that we disconnect this one for now and we patch that into the output for the reduxer. So it's all the way to the dry signal. If I then increase the gain and I up the volume, you already start to see exactly what we have there. So let's turn that up so we get a bit of the same signal in there a bit much we might want to make sure that we have it in the same approach there so it does look like a very similar yeah, sine wave right so what we can then do is of course let me just make sure that we have the gain and the volume set at around the same levels there And we can then just increase the mix. So right now, the mix is going to go all the way down because right now we don't have any much redux going on there. But as you can already see, is well, you see a bit of jitteriness at that level there. You see that? The ragged edges on that sign signal. If we then um, increase the redux, we're just going to increase the jaggedness of that signal as well. And you immediately hear that this will indeed, well, increase the uh, the frequency that we perceive of this signal. So this is of course absolutely brilliant, right? And what we can then do is we can we can apply this to all kinds of um, shapes that we have here. So let's uh, make sure that we grab, for instance, a bit of a. We go. We, we get something really nice. So what's essentially happening is, of course, it's the sampling rate that's happening within the reductor is indeed decreasing the more I well, increase the level of redux. All the way when you get into, well, sub-audible levels. And of course, as said, what you can then also do is use the, the second output as well, which will then be, of course, spread as you, well, as you expect. So again, input 1 is normal to input 2, and then you've got your uh, second output, which is then influenced also by the level of spread that you get there. So let's just uh, 
patch this into straight into the other one there. There you go. Make sure that we have the get it on the same scale. And we might want to uh, make it like that. There you go. And if we then increase the spread. you'll see that the the second output will start to increase that sampling well distance much quicker than the um, the original one so again this is exactly what's happening so the question then becomes is how can we use this and how can we apply this Another great thing that we can, of course, also do, because right now we're looking at audio rates, well, signals. Let's um, have a look at what we can do with LFO signals. I'm just going to increase level one. There you go. Increase the time. So there you go. So we will we'll go into sub-audio rates as well. But the effect is, of course, not as incredible as it was in the, oh, in the audio range. So let's, let's look at this. There you go. right so again this is what we uh, what we get to work with so what I would then like to do is I want to in actually start to well let's say introduce some actual sounds that we can work with so what I want to do is I want to start off with how I typically start my patches and that is I'm gonna have well let's say we are gonna reset Pam's new workout as we typically do. Make sure that we have one of them going into the Hermit. From the Hermit actually go into, instead of using the Orna, I'm actually gonna use the Graphic VCO for now. So I'm patching that into the Volt Proctiv. And I'm gonna make sure that we patch the gate from there into, well, into the boundary. And we can actually do some nice things with this. So go into the tree input. I'm not going to use the um, the gate input for now. And then I'm going to grab the output from there and paste it into that. So we would now be able to get some nice sounds. Once we have that in, and we can actually grab another one and we patch that from the first out into the first in there. That's a nice sound to work with, right? What we can then do, of course, is, is, is just instead of just patching this into the output directly, how about we just uh, throw this into the input? Make sure that we have that all the way down. Have that all the way down. We might want to reduce that a bit. And then we're just gonna grab the output from there. And 
let's just do this slightly differently. So we're just going to do it like that. Wrap the output, patch that into the boundary. And then from there, we just patch it into the mixer. You already hear a bit of distortion there. But that's not that that's of course intended that this already has some effect. But what you can then of course do is also grab the output from the boundary for the actual envelope and patch that into the CVN. So we have this all the way down. We might want to do it like bits in the middle there. I'm just going to down tune this a bit. right We're just looking for some of these hidden gems, right? Now we might want to change it a bit. I love the um the amount of well harmonics this brings nice right so another thing I want to do is I want to add some uh, some beats to this I might want to just change the, uh, the actual loop that we have here so what I'm now doing is I'm grabbing the foundation and grabbing the drum sound out of that and patching that into channel number two Because it doesn't necessarily need to be a stereo signal that it's working with. It can work with anything. Now 
Let's go back all the way to the dry sound. So now I can use the spread to um, increase the amount of redux, so indeed decreasing the frequency of sample rates for just the second one. So this is indeed just the foundation, so that's the bass drum that you're hearing. Let me just turn this down for a bit. So again, this is the sound we're working with. I'm just going to increase the... Um, the mix, turn the redux down, this is the all wet signal, spread is at zero, so this is indeed reacting to the boundary, so that's of course increasing the amount of well redux there too. So we might want to disconnect that for now. But if we then reintroduce the CV from the um, from the boundary, it does become a bit more bouncy, right? So then we might want to say, well, we've got a nice bass drum going. Let's introduce a bit of snare. Make sure that that doesn't block it. See if we can do something with this. not too bad, right? Yeah. Next thing we're going to introduce is a bit of hi-hat. See if we can get a bit of hi hat going with this.
the one thing that we haven't done with the overall melody yet is we haven't really introduced any 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 sort of filtering yet so what i want to do is I'll, i just want to quickly grab the outputs that we're patching into the boundary and before we actually patch that into the well, the mix here let's disconnect that for now and the one thing i'm done doing i'm patching it into the steve's ms22 by tree tom modular who we'll have on the show in just a, well, in a few weeks i'm assuming
um, made sure that we get the, uh, the bass drum in all its glory. I think that that's um, <laughs> probably more than enough that you guys will need on the uh, reductor. If you've got any specific things you'd like me to show, just let me know and I'll uh, incorporate it into a follow-up video. So let's uh, go back to the studio and talk to you in a bit. Cheers. So I hope you like this video on the Reduxer by Voices. Um, 
just my thoughts on the module on its own. I think that this is one of the nicest uh, bit crushes I've seen around. And the reason why I specifically mention bit crushes is that this is much more nuanced than some of the bit crushes I've seen before. You can actually fine tune and, and really dial in the, the, the actual level of bit reduction you want. This is not gonna go overboard directly. You actually have that control to really make sure that you get that slight crunch you want on it, uh, as opposed to just going overboard and just destroying your sound overall, um, which you can still do if you want it, but only if and only if you want it. So that being said, I love the amount of control this has. Um, the one thing I am not quite sure of is how you want to use, uh, well, the spread amount in a true stereo approach, but that might be just me uh, misunderstanding that approach. But I do love that you've got dual, well, uh, channels that you can work with. And that really helps and it's gonna go forward into, well, making sure that this is gonna end up in a lot of my patches going forward. Um, that being said, I do want to thank Voices again for making this uh, video possible. Uh, for now, I just want to thank everyone that's uh, taken the time to watch this video. If you do want to uh, support this channel even more, uh, please have a look at the affiliate links down below. Um, those won't cost you anything extra, but a small percentage of your purchase will of course go towards this channel. So again, it's a, uh, you might say a harmless crime. Hmm. So please do that. Um, and if you want to go even further than that, of course, you can still become a patron or just uh, buy me a cup of coffee with the links down below. Uh, for now, I would just say, please, everyone, stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope to see you for my next video. Cheers.